Pastis is one of those things that I think an incredible thing to drink on its own. It reminds me a lot of ouzo. I'm half Greek, half Italian, but I was brought up Greek. I was brought up drinking ouzo. And I was in France this past summer and I found this pastis uh, that was from Marseille that is really, really good. And I know it's something that people can't really, can't get this bottle here in the US. So I was like, I wanted to kind of retrace um, pastis and something that would be accessible here in the U.S. And the, one of the first pastis that were ever created was, was this Ricard pastis that was created in 1930. And it really came as a result of um, absinthe being banned. So absinthe was banned, I think, around 1950. So actually 1932 this was created. It was banned for 17 years before this was created. Um, one of the things with absinthe is, and it ha it's, the, it's the licorice um, liqueur that's actually made with, or anise flavored liqueur, that's actually made from wormwood. And a lot of people believe that it was the wormwood um, that actually made people hallucinate and made them go crazy. And what they don't really remember is a lot of those absinths that were made back in those times, they were really poor distillates. They were really poorly made. And there was um, alcohol levels and ingredients in there that weren't really clean, that really made people go nuts. Um, so it's hard to say because people have been able to imbibe absinthe over the years now and not really have the same reaction. But basically, Pasis was created in 1932 by Ricard, and it's a very similar profile. It's an anise-flavored spirit. Um, it's made from star anise for anise instead of fennel and that kind of green licorice flavors. It's a very unique spirit in the sense of like every month they change the herb out, so they're not just putting a bunch of herbs together. It's rosemary for one month, then they take it out, then they put basil for one month, then they put fennel. So it's this beautiful layer of flavors. And um, when it overtook, when it, when it basically became a substitute for absinthe, there were a lot of absinthe cocktails that were now being used with pastis. So there was Death in the Afternoon, which is basically champagne and absinthe. Um, but also one of the most common is putting absinthe in a Sazerac. Sazerac is basically a rye, old-fashioned, with pecho bitters instead of... Uh, Angostura bitters, and what they would do is you would take the pastis, so you'd take an atom, or some people would rinse it. Now I would say that modern bartenders would take a, this and they would basically coat the glass with the pastis or the absinthe and um, pour the Sazerac into there. What I want to do is just kind of do a, a taste test of this Ricard, um, just to kind of give you kind of a clear flavor profile for this, and then also show you how I think is the right way or the most enjoyable way to drink it. So again, um, what a lot of people believe is that a true pastis should be made in France, should be from the Marseille region, should be no less than 40%, but the Marseille pastis is 45% alcohol. So let's just give this a little, um, little taste and sniff. So that color, this particular one probably has some caramel color added to it but it's also coming from all of the herbs as well. So the smell, right up, that smell to me is very ouzo. I wouldn't say that it, it's, um, you smell the licorice, it just smells, if this was clear, I would think this is ouzo. It's that strong anise flavor, it's, you could tell there's a high alcohol content to it. Mmm. Instant uh, warm flush over the body, instant. And it's got the anise in it, and it's got a good good body to it, good body to it. It's an aperitif, it's a digestive, it's a wonderful thing to have after meals. But I think how it's best consumed is to dilute it and chill it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I think a typical ratio would be like two ounces, let's say four parts of the spirit to one part of water, right? So let's just put in two ounces. And we're going to put this over a big cube. So you can use any ice you want, but I'm going to put this over a big cube. And then what's really nice, um, what a lot of people do, is they actually add a little splash of water. So I put a half ounce of water into it. I love making waters from different herbs. Uh, we have a video on this site, just really, really simple, how to make a basil water. Or, you know, and I would love, I love serving waters. To me, water is like the bread to alcohol drinks, you know. Um, something that I love having people start with, but also just giving them something besides just water. So I actually made a purple opal basil water. So just to add a little bit of flavor. 
I'm going to put that in there. And instantly, see how it gets cloudy? That's another thing that reminds me so much of Ruzo. A lot of the anise spirits, there's a property in there that actually is what causes it to get cloudy. And again, this, uh, this was created in 1932, 17 years after the ban of absinthe. Okay, so you can see how it's cloudy. You can really still smell the anise. It's strong, you know, it's strong. So let's give it a sip this way. Mm. Yeah, what I like about that is it's not so strong in your face. It's, it's soothing. It's mellowed it out a little bit. I could see it. This is, the, this is the perfect type of thing that after you've had a big meal, you're outside, you're sitting under, a sh you're in shade, and you're just sipping this. It's a digestive, it makes you feel good. It's, um, I think it's nice also to deal with strong flavors like that for digestion as well. So listen, you could do whatever you want. You could take whatever waters you want, but I think having water with ice in it is the perfect way to go. So, cheers. Mm-hmm.